And hello, fellow office workers. Welcome back to the Human Resource Machine. This is Tango. Back to the game that I am truly addicted to. And, and I know a lot of you guys are too. I can tell from the comments you guys have been leaving that this game has got a lot of you guys hooked. And you guys just, I know some of you just bought the game and just blew right through all 40 something levels or whatever, but this game is doing pretty well on Steam. It is getting pretty popular, and I just want to thank you guys for the huge support, hitting that like button, and just leaving the positive comments about how much you're loving this game, because I know I am loving it myself. Now, last episode we left off, and I kind of left a choice for you guys. I said, let me know if you want to do 22, 21, or 10. Most of you, I would say 70% of you, if not more, said go to 22. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get 22 in this episode, but a lot of you guys said 10 as well. So, I think what I'm going to do is do 10, and then whatever this guy is here, it looks like he's going to be 12, and then we'll jump to Fibonacci, because that's the one... Yeah, I know what that's going to be. That's not going to be easy. <laughs> All right. So, let's jump right in... Whoa, just crazy click there. Right into Octoplier Suite. Yes, you can always check out your performance on each assignment's optimization challenges. The two green lights next to each button in the elevator will tell you how you're doing. Yes, I learned this after like 20 levels. Is there anything in life more thrilling than self-improvement? <laughs> All right. For each thing... So, now, some of you guys are saying I need to like click on this stuff here. Uh, let's see. Hello again? That's going to just tell me. Tell me more. You might be wondering how you can self-improve and you're already perfect. Yes, I do wonder these things. <laughs> I find other people really appreciate that. All right. Yeah. Not worth my time. Okay. For each thing in the inbox, multiply it by eight and put the result in the outbox. Mm-hmm. 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 Don't have a multiply command. <laughs> that would be too easy. Uh, all right, we're going to have to do... All right, yeah, so it says using a bunch of add commands is easy but wasteful. All right, we don't want to do that. So you could just inbox it <clears throat> and then add to itself like seven times or whatever and you'd be done. But no, no, shame, shame. I think we can do better than that, so let's see here. This one shouldn't be too bad. Alright, it's just a question of basically multiplying, or you add to yourself, copy, add to yourself, copy, add to yourself, I think is what you need to do. So, inbox, copy to, zero, which leaves it in my hand still, and I want to add zero, so that's going to double me. Now I want to take this... And yeah, I think that's pretty straightforward. Stomp it back down on top of itself. Add itself to it again. So the copy, the add, that's gonna take me to 2x. The copy down again and the add to itself is gonna take me to 4x. So repeat the problem or repeat the pattern here. Copy to zero, add to self. And I think we're at 8x and we out it and we jump. Giddy up, go! I think that's it. Five. Ten. Twenty. Alright, that, that looked like an 8x to me. Uh oh, I don't know about the zero case. The zero case might have meant. Oh, that's fine, because we're going to be just multiplying by zero the whole time. That's right. We're good? Alright, speed this guy up here. Didn't we already have a five? Yeah. Alright, zero, zero, zero. Hey, guess what? Still zero. Bam! That was pretty easy. How did I do on instructions, though? Did I, did I fail on instructions? Nope. Nailed it. All right. Speed challenge. Perfect. All right. It looks like when, when you nail both the numbers, there's pretty much one solution. And it looks like I got it. All right. Tetra, conta, plinker, plinker, something with the tetras and then something. Numbers. Big. <laughs> what a wonderful feeling when all your work over the last few years all comes together and culminates in a well-executed assignment. Oh, okay. <laughs> For each thing in the inbox, multiply it by 40 and put the result in the outbox. I'll show you where you can put that result. Man, all right. Same principle here, I think. Wow, this is going to get big. I'm pretty sure it's the same principle, though. So let's see here. If we take it, to get to 40, we want to go... Going by power, or going by multiples of two isn't going to get us to to 40. We're going to go 16, 32, and then we'll blow right past it at 64. So we want to get 32 and eight. So once we get to eight to the to eight x, we want to set that one aside. I'm just thinking this through here. <laughs> once we get to eight x, we want to set that one aside, 
keep going to 32, copy that to some temp, re-pick up the 8x, copy that to another temp, and then multiply the, or add those two temps together and we get 40x. I think that's my plan. That probably made no sense to you whatsoever, but let's keep going here. Add to zero. All right, so that's gonna take us to 2x, 4x, 8x. Now I wanna copy this to over here because I need to set it aside because that's our eight. And then keep going. I'm wondering if there's a savings I could do there. Maybe, I'm not sure though. 16. 32. Oh, perfect. Okay, I don't need to copy. I don't need to double copy anything here because I've already got 32 in my hand. When I'm, I'm, I'm saying powers of the original, or not powers, but multiples of the original number here. I'm at 32x right now. So now I want to add the 8x, which I copied to 1. That's going to give me 40x. Put it in the mailbox and jump around. Did I get it, boss? Two, four, eight. All right. Oh, did I do that wrong? I am 40x. <laughs> nice. That was pretty good. These are pretty easy ones down here, I'd say. I think I got it. Even with the zero case, I think we should be good. The only thing I think I might be a little high on the instruction count. I might have, I might have done something a little extra there. I don't know. Let's see. They will tell us. How'd I do? 14. Ah, one extra. Oh, yeah, there was an extra copy in there somewhere, I'm sure. If I went back and looked at it, but I won't bore you guys. I think when I'm done here, like I said, I may go back and, uh... I may go back and just kind of optimize all of them, but for one instruction or something like that, I'm not going to do it. But I, I admit there was probably an obvious inefficiency there. <sighs> I don't want to do this one. <laughs> Fibonacci visitor. Let's do it. Oh, I know what this is going to be. So Fibonacci sequences, if I remember correctly, are a series of numbers where every number is the sum of the previous two numbers and you kind of get this really fast growing chain and I'm sure they're going to describe it here. This back hallway is for advanced, also known as stupid, employees only. Are you sure you want to be here? Are you stupid? Yes, I am stupid. These night nice shifts <laughs> assignments are optional, you know, and they are difficult. Thanks for the warning. If you need to ask for help, I'll be here looking through these catalogs for a golden spiral. Uh, okay. Okay. Whew. For each thing in the inbox, send it to the out send to the outbox the full Fibonacci sequence up to, but not exceeding that value. For example, if inbox is 10, outbox should be 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. Okay, so this is the Fibonacci sequence we're talking about here. It kind of always starts out as 1, 1, but then after that, like the 2 is equal to the last two numbers. 1 plus 1 is 2. The 3, you guys can see my mouse cursor. I hope I turned that on for the recording. The three is equal to the previous two numbers. Two plus one is three. The five is equal to three plus two. The eight is equal to five plus three. So you see how it goes here. And here, okay, they got a, they got the full one down here. Eight, 13, 21, 34, blah, 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 and it keeps on going. So that's a Fibonacci sequence. <sighs> All right, let's see here. Uh, generally, there's a good chance it's gonna start with that. All right, they give us a zero. Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is pick up and copy to... Oh, okay, so now would be a good time to talk about... Last episode, they introduced labels, and I kind of shunned them and mocked them, but I wasn't... I'll be honest with you, I didn't really understand what it was. I thought it was another way to do comments in the program side over here. I didn't realize it was... This. Okay. Yes, so... You can... Okay. <laughs> uh, do that over. All right, so this is like labels for variables on the floor, I guess you could call them. So this is the number we're picking up. So this is kind of our cutoff uh, or our limit. I'll just call this one like limit. Eh, limit. <laughs> All right, and it puts a little label on the floor there. So 
it helps me think about it, and when you guys, I'll use the word limit and you'll know what I'm talking about. So this is the limit uh, variable floor space, whatever you want to call it. So, all right, inbox, copy to limit. Okay, so that's the number we're going to be checking to. We need to leave that pristine and not check it, really, because we're going to be probably subtracting whatever proposed current number we're going to dump out. I think. All right, so... All right, they give us a zero here. Are we gonna actually need... I don't think we're gonna need a zero. I'm trying to do this on camera. I hope that's okay, guys. If I get stuck, I will... I will definitely break here, but all right, they give us a zero. I can't... I can't think of a reason why we would need a zero. We're not... I don't think we're gonna be comparing against it. I think they're giving it the okay they're giving us that so that we have a starting point so I'm gonna bump that right away okay that's gonna take that to one so I think all right so one of the, one of the things I know I've already been kind of thinking in the back of my head is there's gonna be the main loop of this okay there's gonna be like a jump if negative and then inside this main loop is gonna be the general process is going to be like slide the numbers down because there's going to be I think there's going to be three variables here let me call this one well that's the worst C ever current <laughs> so hard current let me call this one so this will be the previous number or the I want to call it the high number high number and this is going to be low so low. All right, so those are the three variables that we're going to be playing with here. So take, and it's all going to start with this zero. So we're going to bump it to one right there with that first bump plus command right there. And we can probably actually cheat here. I wonder, I wonder if they're going to send it. If these are the numbers they're going to give us, then we're fine. I think those are the numbers we actually have to solve for. Uh, if they gave us a zero, this would be incorrect then. Because if they gave us a zero, technically I shouldn't output anything. But I don't think they're going to do that. So I'm going to try, try and cheat and we'll see. We'll fix it if that's a problem. All right, so I've output the one. So now let's go with the slide pattern. Now, so when I say the slide, I'm going to refer to this, the slide, the shift, whatever I call it. It's going to be the process of copying these numbers down the chain here. Which, in the Fibonacci sequence here, is going to be essentially moving to the next number. So... I need to take what's in current and put it in high and what was in high and put it in low. And I got to do high to low first so I don't stomp over it with the current. Okay, so I don't think this will be in the right spot, but it's going to be, this will probably have to get moved around. All right, so copy from high, copy to low, copy from, whoops, I'll move that, current. Copy to get, get in there too high. All right, so that right there does the shift high to low, current to high. And now at this point, I need to recalculate my new current. And I, I do that just by adding what is now in the low and the high. So, uh, what do I have? I got? I've got, I've got high in my hand. <laughs> so I want to add low and copy to current. So that just made my current be the sum of the previous two numbers, which is what's happening here in the Fibonacci sequence all the way through. All right, so current is still in my hand. This may have to be... I'm not sure if all this stuff should be at the top of the loop. I may have to reorder this loop. I know all this stuff needs to be in the loop. I'm just not sure of the ordering yet, but we'll have to see that, how that shakes out. All right, so I've got current in my hand. I want to see if I want to see if I need to output it now to see if we've gone over our limit. If we've essentially if we've gone over exactly limit over there on the side. So we've got to jump if neg. I just need to subtract limit from current, and if it's negative, that means limit was bigger, which means I need to continue my loop. So that's perfect. That actually works out great. Excellent, excellent. So that's 
<laughs> I, I just got to actually output it now. Uh, let's see here. That's the main loop. I need to output... Oh, I don't have... I'd have to do a copy from... Oh, that feels... This feels horrible. And then outbox it. It sucks that I gotta, like, copy to subtract, but at this time I've stomped what's in my hand, so I gotta pick it back up again and say, hey, that thing I had in my hand? Yeah, I'll put it now. That might be... There might be a more efficient way of doing that, but if I do that, come back around, copy from high, copy to low... Yeah. Let's try that. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, let me go through the flow here. Alright, I output a 1. I do all this stuff, which is gonna be shifting down and adding up empty variables, basically, so I'll probably get another one here. Oh, 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 wait, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. No. No, 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 okay, this has gotta go... Because I need to, I need this jump to be here after the subtraction. Duh, idiot. So then this has gotta go, let's try putting this up at the top. Uh, that's kind of a bummer. Because I've already got current. I've already got current in my hand, I outbox it. Copy from current. Well, that's gonna just outbox another one, and then that, okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Uh, and then just jump the whole thing. This is probably horrendously wrong. Let's see what happens. All right, twenty-one. You go to one, one. Empty value. You can't copy from. Oh. Ah, all right. I gotta. I've gotta seed all the values on the floor here. Fine. Fine, be that way. Then... Alright, I probably need to... That feels horribly wasteful. I really gotta... I think I gotta pick up the zero and copy it to high first. Uh, yeah. This is gonna be wasteful. Copy from current, copy to high. Oh wait, I gotta get the copy to limit first up there. This is a tough one, guys. <laughs> trying to do it on camera. Copy from current to high. Brain, not working. Hang on, alright. Copy to limit. Right, got that one. Copy from current to high. That's going to take the zero and put it there. And then it's going to bump current. I don't need to do this because I'm not copying from that one. This feels excessive, but let me see what I got. I may come back to it. I just want to get it working, and then I'll probably take a good pass at optimizing it. Alright, one's going out. One's going out. Bump you down. Bump you over. Calculate the new current. Stuff it there. This is not good. I got too many ones. Eh. Yeah, saw that one coming. Alright. Uh, alright, let me... I've babbled about this one long enough. Let me see what I'm doing. Let me cut here and figure it out. Wow, okay, yeah, I just watched back that clip, and I rambled on that one for quite a while. I do apologize about that, but... Man, I get absorbed in these things. This is a good one. I like this one. I think I've got it. And by the way, guys, I'm, I'm trying to find that balance of what you want to see me do, you know, on camera versus off camera. Now, if I do everything off camera, there's no point, because I'm just going to be giving you a walkthrough, and that's, you know, like, with answers, and that's not really that exciting. But at the same time, that one was probably a bit much uh, rambling. But let me know what kind of balance you want there. If, if it's just right, just say so too. All right. So I changed this intro part up a little bit. I didn't change my loop at all here. And I think this might do it. Copy to limit. Got to do that as always. We're going to bump current, kick that up to a 1, and then immediately copy that one over to high. So instead, I was copying it over as a 0. Now I'm going to copy it over as a 1, essentially. And then immediately outbox it. It's still going to put a 1 out there. And then let's see what this does here. I think we might have it. One, dump it there. Throw the one in the outbox. Throw another one in the outbox. Do the shift. That one down, that one there. Calculate the new current, which is gonna be a two. Subtract it from limit. We got negative six, we're still good. Pick the current back up, throw it in the outbox. Continue the loop, bump down, two to high. Add it up, we get three to current, oh yeah. Subtract eight, we're still negative, we're good. Pick up the three, throw it in the out box. Excellent, shift down, current to high. Add them up, five is our new number, stuff it in current. Subtract the limit, boom, negative three, we're still good. 
Speed it up a little bit here. I think this next loop here is the one, because this is going to be eight, actually. So this should not go out. We got zero. Done. Start over. Now let's just see if the reseeding is good. No, it is not. Oh. Okay, that makes sense. I've smashed my zero. I need to save my zero for the next loop iteration. Let me do that real quick. All right, one last try here. This hopefully should do it. I, again, just rearranged the... Uh, intro bit a little bit here. Introduced a new one called save. I actually moved my current up here. Save is going to stay as zero. So the, the it starts out now. Copy to limit as always. Copy from save into current. Bump current. Copy to high. So this is my current high and low. And I'm at save I'm just keeping as a zero so that every time through I can recopy back from that zero save. Which it feels like there's probably a bump or something that I could be doing to save an instruction or something, but I just want to see where we're at here. Again, I want to get this thing working and see how bad we're doing. We'll go through once here. One. I'll put the one. Shift down. Let's go a little faster here. We've seen this. Two. Three. We should get a five output now. No. Buckets of failure. Ah! All right, all right, all right, I think I'm pretty sure I got it this time. Again, it came down to me misreading the instructions up here. I've done that like four times now. I need to actually read these things more carefully. But uh, it says uh, blah, 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 up to the full Fibonacci sequence, up to but not exceeding that value. I was writing this program as if I would, should not go up to that value, but I need to actually include the limit value if it matches. Uh, and the number we had, which actually is gone now, but we had 21 here. And that is a natural Fibonacci number that's going to come up in the sequence. And my jump, if negative here, was basically coming to zero, so it was not including that. So what I did was added a bump on the limit here right at the beginning of the loop. So I'm always subtracting one more, which kind of offset and kind of did a, a cheaty way of doing uh, if less than or equal to zero instead of just saying with less than zero. Anyways, blah blah blah. let's go. I think we got it here, so... The limit was 10, but it's bumped to 11 there. So let's rip through this. I'm pretty sure. One, one, three, five. We get the eight now. He should go out because definitely still a negative number. Go through the loop again. Boom, boom, shift. We got 13. Throw him out. Start over at 20. We get 21. And as long as my reset works here, yeah, I think we're good. All right, letting it blast. Fibonacci away! <laughs> Come on, buddy. 13, all right, there's the 21. Make sure he does go out. Die! All right, I guess 19 or fewer. Uh-oh. Woo! Nailed it! Yes! Oh! Yeah! That's how you do it! I can't. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm, I'm kind of surprised right now. I'm quite surprised right now. Oh man, that was crazy. All right, all right. Uh, let me see how much time we got. Maybe we'll do one more. Why not? Oh no, 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 no. Okay, yeah, we're a bit long in the episode here. Unfortunately, man, this was a good. One. I had a lot of fun with the Fibonacci one, but uh, yeah, Fibonacciification process took quite a bit longer than I expected. I did a little bit of chat and I did it mostly. Mostly on camera. I hope you guys like that. Some of the other ones I'll try to cut and jump a little bit more so we can get more in. Because I know we got a lot more to go here. But I'm also going to try and start getting these episodes out a little bit more frequently. Hopefully shooting for one every two days or so instead of three or four days in between. Uh, and yeah, I think for going on uh, going on the path forward, I'm going to do like 21, 24. And just kind of ping pong back and forth between these branches. And I'm not going to blow past any more. I'll do the same thing when I get up to this side branch up here. But yeah, we're, we're doing good. We're doing good. All right. Until next time, guys. Human Resource Machine. See you later.